Welcome back to Sorry Rich Farm. I'm Jacob and today we are going to be making a raised bed and I think it's probably one of the best raised beds that you can make and I'll go into detail on why that is, cost, everything and we're going to take you along this whole entire build. But uh, one reason why we're, we're building this is for a couple reasons. One, y'all really ask about building a raised bed you know because garden season is coming and so we thought this would be a perfect time to do this video if people are wanting to get into raised beds and another reason is my sister is getting into gardening and she contacted us and was like hey i just kind of want to do some raised beds what should we do and i kind of told her my opinions and stuff and i i told her hey i'll just uh build you build you i think we're building her too um, so these ones that we're building are actually going to be going to my sister. She's getting into gardening. That's kind of one of the reasons why we're doing this. And we're taking y'all along because y'all wanted to know also how to build these. Um, so right now I did most of my cutting of all this. We're mainly using tin. And I'm just going to cut a little bit of this tin uh, to show you kind of how to do it if you've never done it before. The way I cut tin is, and this is just regular roofing tin. Um, it's just this like cutting wheel. It's a metal. This thing is very good. This I've had for, man, probably almost two years now. And every piece of metal I cut with it. So it works real well. If you don't have one of these, you can also turn around a, um, a saw blade backwards. And you can use it that way. I've seen people do that. But however you cut tin. Um, so I'm going to first get to cutting this. What I like to do with these is these are going to be actually two feet deep bed so i just measured two feet out i cut it and then i use this because this will make it a lot faster instead of you know marking a whole new piece i just use this as a jig and i, and I flush the ends up and i know this is two feet and so then i just get my wheel turn it on and then i just kind of go along it and make my line in there and then i take the piece off and then I cut it and I just keep going down and doing that this whole uh, sheet so let me uh, finish these cuttings and we'll come back to you alright so I got that little bit of tin uh, cut up now the next thing we're going to be cutting, and these, and guys I'll show you all this, when it'll all come together whenever we start building it, but these are going to be in the corners, and what these are, are it's also tin, but it's the corner pieces, um, I don't know exactly what they're called, but if you kind of see here on our shop, it's these pieces right here, when the two pieces of tin on a corner meet, they put this here, and it seals it up, and it looks a lot better too. So that's what this is. So our uh, bed, like I said, is gonna be two foot deep. So these gotta be two foot also. And same thing, I measured one out and then stick it on here as a jig. And then I get the grinder and just make a little line, take it off. See, it makes a, a good line like that so you don't have to use your marker and stuff. All you need is to do one. And trust me, it's a lot faster than trying to mark out each one but we're going to be cutting these and then after that cutting we'll go in the shop and actually start putting this stuff together all right so we got the uh, lumber kind of laid out on what it's going to look like now the amount of lumber you're going to need so these are going to be a four foot by 12 foot bed so you're going to need two uh two by four by 12s and then you can get one two by four by eight Cut that in half and that makes your end pieces okay just how you see it right now this is a 12 foot now then you have to get um the one by fours by 12 okay and you need two of those because the one by four is going to go on top it's going to give a little bit more stability and the same you're going to need the same thing is 12 foot 12 foot and then you could get an eight foot but we just got a, a 12 foot just because it was easier but that's what you need lumber wise and um, the reason we're going with 4x12 is if you go any kind of wider than 4 foot in a raised bed it's kind of 
hard because on one side you can reach you know two two feet ish on this side and then if you got to come around the other side you can reach the other side you can't you know always reach all the way over it's just a lot easier when you're on the side just your arms reach one side go around if you go like five to six feet wide it's sometimes hard to get in that middle and you're just kind of wasting space and the 12 foot it's just easy because the uh, the boards you know they come in 12 foot and you start getting longer than that uh, it can kind of get hard if you don't have a trailer and stuff like that and then you sometimes have to worry about you know something bowing out so 12 foot has seemed to work really good for our beds and I believe this is our third year with those beds so and they're holding up awesome so that's the lumber and that's the reason kind of for the dimensions um, for us I did cut these two by fours on the sides they're actually i believe it was 11 7 is what i did is i cut them a little bit shorter because since these one by fours are 12 foot i want an inch overhang on the ends and when you see this it'll make more sense it just stayed stayed till the end it'll make sense when i'm showing you this because you got to account for the thickness of the board on the ends and if i want an inch on each side that's what I had to cut. So it all depends. That's your preference. If you want, if you want it just completely flushed, that's fine. I just like a little bit of an overhang. I think it looks a little bit better. So that's kind of the only cutting I really did. And then I'm going to be cutting the one by fours. So let me uh, cut that and we'll start putting these together. I'm just using regular screws, uh, doing some pre-drilling and probably put two to three screws in each corner and such. So we'll get into that and I'll show you what we're doing. All right, so you can see the, you know, pre-drilled and I actually put three screws in each side. Pre-drill them because you don't want your wood to split on you. It's a pain when that happens. And I'm using, uh, I think these are three inch screws. Yeah using three inch screws on this uh, particular on the corners. And another thing I didn't mention is this is untreated lumber, okay? You don't want to use treated lumber from what I've read and everything, and it makes sense, you know, the chemicals in the wood, it'll leach into the soil and it's not gonna be good. Um, you, don't probably, you don't wanna put stain on it either because the same thing, chemicals. I know in ours we did and I didn't know that at the time that was a mistake I made because I didn't know. So I know that now, and from here on out, uh, I don't do that anymore. But one thing you can do, because I know untreated lumber, it can rot a lot quicker. Um, and it is organic, you can do this if you get raw linseed oil. Not boiled, not polymerized, but raw. Raw linseed oil, just coat your wood with it, it is organic. I've looked it up and there's no toxic, no, you know, toxics or chemicals or anything like that with raw linseed oil. Uh, it does take a long time for it to dry. It takes like three to four days. But if you're st it, for any project, you want to do treated wood, but you don't want it to, you know, rot out after, you know, a few years, raw linseed oil is really good to use if you don't have treated lumber you can kind of treat it yourself. All right, so we got the two by fours all connected. Now we're gonna go on the top piece. This is kind of somewhat of a cosmetic thing, but it makes it look nice and it does help. You'll see when we start putting the tin on. Um, so what we're gonna do here is just get the uh, one by four by 12 and stick it right on top. And what I did is go on the inside. I did about an inch, oh, what is that? About a fourth, one fourth on the inside. And then the outside, it's about an inch and about a one fourth. And that's that kind of overhang I'm talking about. Just makes it kind of look a little bit better. I think so, but if you don't and you just want to make everything, you know, completely flushed, that's up to you. Um, so what we're gonna do is screw all this down. We're gonna do the other side. And then when I do the other side, I'm gonna have to cut 
in between the middles here because I got to figure out what the length is from here and then I'll put the other board in here so it'll all look the same all the way around and I have this little top piece and as always we're going to just do a little pre-drill because I just don't like cracking wood that is very frustrating for me so we're just going to do a little pre-drill and then we'll start putting some screws in and these screws that I'm using these ones are just a two and a half inch All right, so as everyone knows, I'm not perfect and nobody is. So I just want to kind of show you a little bit of a mistake that I didn't count for when I was doing this. Uh, whenever I was talking about the inch, like kind of having your inch and one fourth overhang, well, this piece right here has to have, you know, the same uh, overhang on the inside, right? And so when doing that, because you're going to be putting the tin under here, we're going to be doing that in a second. When you see here, it's not really flushed on this side. There's, you know, that little uh, piece coming off. So it's not a big deal. I'll uh, screw this down and then I'll just kind of cut this little piece off and it'll be flushed. But I just kind of wanted to uh, let you all know that, that I kind of, you know, made a little bit of a mistake. So I didn't want you all to make that also. Just remember, you're gonna want some a decent overhang on the inside because your tin is gonna go underneath here and it's going to be like kind of like a track underneath this. Right, so we got all pretty much the woodwork done. Uh, the screws, we did about 10 to 12 inches apart. There's not a science to it. I just like to put a, a decent amount of screws in there just because you know you may be stepping on it you know sitting on it and you know you just you want as much in there as possible to hold that board in place all right so we are going to now uh flip this upside down and we're going to start putting the tin on now guys i just want to say i'm not a carpenter by any means i don't have any background in necessarily building the only thing i know is just from watching other people watching my grandpa and my dad so if you see something that's you know completely messed up I'm not perfect and I don't uh, claim to be a carpenter even on YouTube. So I just do what I know how to do and I work with what I got. So don't beat me up too much if you see something wrong or uh, you know I cut something wrong. But we're going to get this flipped over and we are really close from being done. This is a pretty easy project if you kind of know what you're doing. So we are now putting the tin on and what you're going to need is just get some what I'm using just regular roofing screws just because they're easier. You're going into metal and going into wood and that's what these are meant for. Um, and you can use, yeah, you don't have to be perfect. I got some old kind of rusted ones that I found on the ground. I'm going to use those. Uh, I don't have a lot of them, but you know, do with what you got. Um, so what you're going to do is these corner pieces that I told you about before. Like again, they're two foot long, and what we're gonna be doing right now is sticking them in the corner. And as you told, I told you with the track, this is why you want some, some you know, uh, depth on the inside because this is where the tin and everything's gonna go. And you're just gonna flush that up in the corners like that, and then you're just gonna drill it in. All right, so now we're going to be uh, putting up the sides. Now these are the end pieces, and what it's going to kind of look like is this. And then you're going to, we're going to be screwing it in. Now, if if y'all are you know you got free tin or it's like different colored tin, 
and you know everyone wants their garden to look you know cosmetically pleasing to the eye and everything uh, so if you got like say two different colors pick a color you want so like this right here is going to be the main color it's going to be white with this kind of you know smoke uh, gray now over on the other end it's straight up blue you know you can probably see it right there now that doesn't really matter because my sister where it's going to be placed you're not even going to see that spot okay so i'm strategically placing these white pieces where when she walks out her back door she will see this that's all she's going to see is these colors she'll never see the blue just because we're, where we're going to position them so just think about that whenever you're doing it where you're going to put them position them and put the colors where they're really not going to be seen just by you know passerbys or just yourself out your window so that's just something to think about you know everyone wants their garden to look you know pretty in aspect all right so whenever you're putting these in get your first one in when it comes over here it's going to be kind of floppy around so put your foot up and you kind of want to push it up and kind of pull it back this way see that's pretty good right here and you're going to put a screw in every uh, rivet right here and then you just keep going down the same thing so see how this is push up kind of pull it back just a little bit and then it's going to stiffen up real nice so just we're going to get that done and then we'll bring you back with a finished product but stay tuned to the very end when we're done with this i really want you to to see why we think these are the best raised beds or this type of uh kind of design in aspect not maybe this particular one but using this type of tim i think you will be amazed on the stuff that we kind of found out and things like that so please stay to the end and we'll just run through uh just the cost and everything and i think you're going to be really surprised on this Alright y'all, we're done with the garden bed. This is the final product. Uh, I think it came out really nice. And so like I was saying before, the thing I like about this is it's like rot resistant. Like this tin will last, I mean, almost forever in aspect. 40, 50 years. I mean, it's probably going to last, you know, my lifetime. Um, there's not a whole lot of repair. And the thing that we're looking at is we have these beds, we have the wood beds. And why I'm gonna kind of try to steer away from wood beds is because, guys, when I priced this out, if you bought all this brand new, the tin we had was refurbished, so that was kind of free. But to buy this bed brand new with white tin, it's about 140 bucks with the lumber, the tin, probably some screws and stuff. I mean, it's not like cheap, but if you're thinking, well, I'm just gonna go buy some two by 12s and you know, screw them together and be done, it's gonna be, I'm not kidding you, almost the same price, at least for us in our area here in Oklahoma. It, it I think for to build this exact thing out of two by 12s, it would have costed, I think like 130 some odd dollars. I mean, maybe a $10 difference, but the thing you're getting with this bed is there's no, there's no repeat of maybe fixing it three years later because the other beds they're untreated wood they'll last maybe four or five years just kind of depends i know each climate and everything's different but with this spend the money if you're gonna buy the stuff and you're gonna make this and you're thinking about beds raised beds i would highly suggest going with th with this type of bed because it's you build it once and it's pretty much done um, maybe you know so many years later you may have to replace this top board but if you put that raw linseed oil like i said it's non-toxic it'll last a lot longer I think it's just the best bang for your buck. It can be a lot cheaper if you just go one foot instead of two foot. But the other reason we went two foot is because 
of this reason right here when the plants grow up you're going to be picking them you know tomato plants they'll get up you know a couple feet i'm going to be picking them just literally like i'm standing i'm not bending down hurting my back you know anybody that's kind of you know not elderly but older and they don't want to you know bend over all the time you have this two foot bed that brings it up more and if you're going to be uh you can come over here and look it's just a nice seat if you want to come in and sit in your garden and look around it's just a seat this is normal sitting so i really like this two foot bed just because of the comfort and you know this could be like a forever bed you know we could have this until our old age for the price you just can't beat it you, you really can't and if you're on a budget i know buying all this stuff is kind of a little bit expensive but don't just go out and buy wood spend the money get this and you'll never necessarily have to mess with it again other than you're just filling uh more dirt in it but guys this is what i think is probably one of the best raised beds that you can probably use we've been using ours for three years now and we really like it but i hope you all thought this uh video was informational uh hit that like button and if you got any questions put them down in the comments please subscribe to our channel it really helps us out and um just uh, hit that bell for notifications so you can see these new videos coming out as soon as they do because this could really help you in probably a month or so when you start to actually start planting in your beds and if you're wanting to, to fill beds we show some other videos on how to fill beds on the cheap and it's just a, a pretty cool uh, bed y'all we just really appreciate you watching the video and you just take care and god bless